Hello everybody, my name is Slade Gaming Genie, and welcome to my first devlog of my game, Within These Walls. I am an independent developer who learned on his own, uh, with a little bit of help through uh, classes and courses that were available. I still don't understand everything too well. It's uh, my first time working with an engine, and let alone my first time working with Unreal, and thus my first time making a game. So, I'm starting with a very simple, very, uh, prob probably very cliche horror game. Probably where a lot of people start. But, I want to make the story compelling. I want to make the map compelling. So, what we're doing here is a lot of modeling for the map, uh, based on assets that I already had, or assets that existed through the Epic Marketplace. Uh, huge shout out to them for existing, because that's super awesome. But, I did make two things. I made two textures, as well as the landscape, obviously, and the design for the level laid out. Um, so the textures that I made were this wall texture, which is kind of like a beige wallpaper, which is why there's a split in the middle. It was kind of designed based off the idea of uh, old hotels, if you've ever been to one. For example, like, uh, we would, when I was younger, go to hotels as mini vacations uh, while my uh, family was doing business elsewhere and I would rent games on the Nintendo 64 that they had in the the building and there was always this weird like beige wallpaper that was kind of appealing but kind of not but it, it like felt papery even though it's supposed to be like painted on which is why the walls kind of look like that it's kind of supposed to be that same vibe and I, I think I nailed it there's even like a split down the center of the wall where you can kind of see the separation in palettes where they kind of threw it up on the walls uh which I really like I, I think it's a really good touch personally um the ceiling, which you can't see in this footage because it is taken off so that I can get natural, quote-unquote natural light into the scene so that I can actually view what I'm doing and pay attention to stuff, is uh, also something from my childhood. I kind of put it together based on the ceilings I used to have in my childhood home uh, because it kind of brings me personally back to a very creepy time because I used to have a bed that was like three feet from the ceiling and I could reach out and touch the ceiling as a kid. And that was always weird, because it would, like, stab your finger. You know, like, the popcorn ceilings, it would, like, stab into your fingers and stuff like that if you touched it. It's really, really not meant to be touched. I remember one time I actually hit my head on it, and I had, like, a, a, a very strange indent on my head from the cuts that it gave me. Uh, that's kind of dark. But anyways, that's kind of the point. That's why I picked the ceiling the way it is. It's not exactly the same. It wasn't as sharp, but I, I think I, I hit the detail there. You'll see it in screenshots or the full release or the demo that eventually comes out but that's not the point the point is uh that i built the the structure of the house to be good from a glance and off the more you pay attention to it like the the parameters and everything the the measurements are all just kind of slightly off when you pay more attention to them they look odd and that was the goal uh being that this is a game that is going to take place entirely in one area of the house like one one set the, the the main floor of the house itself i didn't really do too much with making the outside look good uh because you won't be seeing it so i didn't feel like putting the effort into making the outside perfect if it's not something you're going to be witnessing at all so that being said i made it to where it looked fine from the inside but the outside is probably a jumbled mess uh, the concept of this horror game, the concept that I'm running with and taking before I design anything else, uh, because so far I have the map, I have the character, and I have the, uh, the inner design, the basic design for the interior laid out, is you're a person who is moving into or out of, I won't disclose that yet, this house, and you've been kind of shut in to the house for a long time. You've been kind of avoiding going out, avoiding talking to people, and... It's kind of causing you to feel trapped in your own home, trapped within these walls, hence the name. But the way that I kind of mimicked that feeling is giving you this this kind of scape to walk around and explore and learn the story as you go, all the while events are playing out and things like that. Uh, and the primary goal, see as you can see I'm doing kind of a look around here to see if there's any light flooding through that I haven't done properly. Uh is by making everything, like I said, slightly scaled incorrectly. Like, the scales are imperfect. So, like, when you go into the bathroom, for example, later in this in this, uh, this video, you will see that uh, there is the, the walk from the bathroom door to the toilet is just too far. Like, it's too big for what the house is. Or, like, there's too many... Uh, 
too many turns in a house that otherwise wouldn't need them. The layout is kind of off the more you think about it. Uh, like, it's it's good from a glance, like I said, but the more you pay attention, the more it just feels like it's not real or not designed correctly. And that's kind of the goal that I was I was intentionally going for. I do like the overall design of the house. Like, I would personally live in the house, but knowing what's going to happen there, I would not buy it. <laughs> but I wanted to make sure that the lighting was very, uh, very well done. I wanted to make sure that the textures were pretty on point. And I wanted to make sure that the house itself felt uh, at least real to a degree. So I did a lot of work to make sure that everything was lined up on the inside. I didn't really know how to snap anything together. And rather than look it up, I just took the time to like individually put like a human touch to it and make everything line up correctly. Um, this is the second iteration of the map. I had done it before, but I wasn't very happy with the way the lighting and volumetric, uh, volumetric cubes and everything were causing like auto exposure and things like that so rather than fix everything after i had already built it i just started from scratch with a new concept so this is this is that footage this the footage of me starting from scratch if you guys are interested i will show the original map and where all my mess ups were because it's very obvious where i messed up it's very if, if you know anything about game development if you know anything about the processes that go into it you will very quickly recognize where i messed up on everything uh but in this iteration, I think I did a lot better. I, I built it a lot quicker. The previous iteration took me a few days to make, and this one overall took me, I want to say, under six hours to put together, which was really impressive on my part. I realized then and there that I had learned a lot more from the experience, but here's the example that I was talking about with the uh, bathroom being just a bit too long. And I think, that, I think that itself is good, because that adds to a component of the game that I'm going to put in later. Um... I don't have a character model. I've, I'm debating whether or not I want to. So I'm essentially stuck in, do I want to put a character model in, or do I want you to just be a floating head and kind of experience it as yourself? I, I haven't really decided yet. I'm not a good 3D modeler, which is why a lot of these are assets for now. I want to work on that process more, but I don't have the experience now, and for now I want to work on the programming element of learning that. So... Rather than uh, designing all the, the props and everything and making it horrible and just, just falling apart at every detail, I want to focus on decently made assets that I found uh, for the decorations and such and then work on the code. So if I can get the code right for this release, then I think I can move on to making assets for the next one. Because that way, I have experience with coding and, I'm, and programming and I can get that all good and then I can worry about building things to suit my needs later, or I can use assets where necessary. But for now, it's kind of all starter content and pre-made stuff that I had from the Epic Games Store, which will all be credited when uh, the time comes, when the credits roll for the game. Everything is going to be properly credited. As I as I put packs into the, the page, even if I don't use anything from that pack, just because I have it in the project, I make sure that I have uh, credit in a note so that I can put it into the, the, uh, the credits of the scene. But... For now, I'm just putting objects down as placeholders to kind of get the feel for how I want the area laid out. Um, and as I continue doing that, I learn more things like, oh, hey, maybe I want more windows here. Maybe I want more lighting here. So a lot of this is just to get experience. It's not necessarily something that I think is going to be phenomenal. Uh, but I do have faith that it will be enjoyable. Uh, that's the goal overall for any game that I have the thought process of making, is that even if it's not something that's like perfect or 10 out of 10, obviously not AAA, not even AA, uh, it's going to be something that's an enjoyable experience. That is the goal of anything that I make. So, as you can see, I'm kind of watching lo-fi hip-hop in the background, but it's on a, an ad that I paused and just never hit play on. Uh, so, a lot of this has been me just learning the ins and outs of designing a level. Uh, which is something that was very important. Uh, so I'm glad that I took the time to do that. And then, on top of that, I have taken this opportunity to kind of get an appreciation for developers in ways that I didn't... Like, it It kind of takes the magic away from playing a game when you think about, uh, like, how it's made and not just the fact that it's made. But it kind of opens up a new door of appreciation because you're like, oh, wow, that was an insane thing. How did they code that? How did they script that? So that's that's a world that's been kind of, like, opened up to me in looking into this, uh, this experience, I would call it, and thinking about, like, why I need to put certain things in certain places, why things need to be laid out certain ways, 
thinking about how I can make uh, the most effective lights or the most effective atmosphere has been a very difficult task, but one that I'm more than willing to pursue. And I don't expect this, my first game here, to be perfect. I don't expect it to be, like, a big deal, but it's going to be a starter point. It's going to be the first step in me getting uh, into into this industry, really. And I don't think of it as more of an industry so much as I think of it as a wonderful, fun hobby. Like, I, I do genuinely enjoy doing what I'm doing, even when it's frustrating. Even when I am getting annoyed because a door isn't dooring correctly, which I made a TikTok about. I made a uh, blueprint for a door that's supposed to be able to open, and it was opening correctly, but it was opening at the start of the game, so every door would just fly open at the start, and it's like, that's not what I'm looking for, that's not what I want. Um, so I'm actually thinking about uh, changing that to you have to push the door open yourself, which I know can be kind of annoying, but it would add to realism, and if there's a chase sequence, if uh, it would make it a bit more creepy to have to like go through the door and then lock it. So I'm thinking about making it to where you can lock the doors rather than open them. So you can lock or unlock a door and then you have to push through it to open it. That could be interesting. But this is my first game, so I don't want to go too crazy. I just want to, you know, like learn what I'm doing. So this sort of devlog isn't really scripted. This isn't something that I plan on doing very frequently. And as a matter of fact, the next devlog that I do will be a lot more organized. There will be a lot more that I specifically want to talk about. But being that this was just in building the map and putting it together, I wanted to just kind of talk about the fact that I'm making a game and ask for feedback. What you guys think about uh, what I'm doing, what you think I'm doing right, what you think I'm doing wrong, what you can help with. Constructive feedback is always welcome. And if it can help me get better at what I'm doing, then I'm always down to take that into account when I do things. So, like I said, this is more more than likely going to be kind of an asset flip. It's going to be something that I more devote to the script rather than the design. Uh, but the story is something that I am going to be working on very, very conducively and very extensively in the uh, in the meantime. So it's going to have a, dec uh, a pretty, pretty decent story with a good map design. I think it's a good map design. If you guys have any tips or anything, let me know. Uh, and it's going to be more atmospheric than anything is what I'm going for. Because right now, I don't have many insane things that you can do. For now, you can't jump. I, I don't think that would be useful. Um, I don't think that would be a useful feature in the game. Uh, it would it would not add to the, the atmosphere that I'm going for. But, for example, uh, populating the house with objects that make it look lived in, that's something that I took a lot of time and effort into doing making sure that it looks like an actual home, making sure that things are scaled properly. That's things that I, I am focusing on specifically for this for this build. So next will probably be more of a script-based devlog or talking about how I'm building certain things. Maybe I'll bring up how I uh, actually did the player controller. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll do that. But I'm planning on adding a sprint button, which is going to be a whole different task on its own because I have no clue what I'm doing. So... If we're interested in that, then feel free to leave a comment, you know, contact me in some way on TikTok here or whatever, and I will look into it. But I can show you guys a couple of things that I'm actually really proud of. For example, like, uh, this, is, this is kind of droning on at this point, so what I'm really happy about is the final product of certain areas. So, like, for example, the guest bedroom here, I'm really happy with this photo. And then, for example, we can talk about... Uh, So, the, like I said, the, the guest bedroom is really nice. I really like that one. Pretty nice, pretty nice photo there. And then we've also got the, uh, what is this, the office after it's finished. I'm really happy with the lighting there. Then we've got the master bedroom. The master bedroom I'm actually very happy with, uh, the design for that. I think everything looks really nice. I'm very happy with the way it looks in the final build, and I'm honestly very happy with, for example, this area here, the living room. Uh, the living room... I think is a very nice location in general. Uh, I have a lot of plans for the living room area. For example, the table, I really like the shine that I got there. And I will be putting more effort into making it look more lived in and more like an actual home. So, 
things like that are subject to change, and things that are empty are more than likely going to be populated later on. Um, so, like I said, I didn't really script any of this. This is just kind of me talking while looking at the footage, looking back at mistakes I've made or things that I can do better or things that I've changed since then. So, if you're interested in knowing more about the game or more about how I'm doing this or more about uh, helping me, possibly, if you have any feedback or criticism or anything that you'd want to give... I'm more than happy to listen and more than willing to learn. This is my first time undertaking something like this, and I'm putting this out there to kind of force myself to continue, because I have a very big habit of uh, not finishing things. I have a very big habit of starting things and going halfway and just dropping it, and I don't want to do that with this. I actually want to do this. I want this to be something that I stick with, and I'm very happy that I am. So... Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed, be sure to like, comment, subscribe. If you have any feedback, feel free to drop it in the comments. And I will be listening to everything because I want this to be something that I get good at. I want this to be something that I make enjoyable for other people. I want this to be something that I can continue to do and learn from and experience with people. So, thank you guys for watching. Peace out.